Hi and welcome back to Grade Guide. This revision video on ecology is directed towards students completing the junior cycle science exam as part of the Irish curriculum. Based off the NCCA learning outcomes, three things we'll be revising in this video are what a habitat is and identifying biotic and abiotic factors within one. We'll also revise how to carry out a qualitative and quantitative study of a habitat. Continuing on from our part one video on ecology, we learned that ecosystems are large areas where living things interact with each other and their environment. Ecosystems such as a grassland ecosystem are usually very large areas, so for the purpose of our studies we survey a small part of an ecosystem called a habitat. A habitat is the specific place in an ecosystem where an organism lives, and in this video the habitat we study is called a hedgerow habitat. Most of Ireland's agricultural land is fields of grassland that farmers use to feed their livestock. Spanning the edges of these fields are hedgerows, and all around these bushes and trees is where we concentrate our habitat study. Take note that even if you studied a different habitat, the methods we use in this video are easily transferable to your habitat. After choosing your habitat and drawing a sketch map of it, the first part of the study is to investigate what factors affect living things in the habitat. These factors are either abiotic or biotic factors. Abiotic factors are non-living things that affect organisms in the habitat, such as soil and air temperature, soil pH, rainfall and light intensity. During our investigation we use a thermometer to measure temperature, a pH meter to measure pH, a rain gauge to measure rainfall and a light meter measures light. Biotic factors are how living things can affect other living things by their presence in the area. Predator-prey interactions, competition and interdependence are biotic factors we looked at in more depth in our part 1 video. The next part of the habitat study is to carry out a qualitative survey. A qualitative survey is noting which animals and plants are present or absent in the habitat. There are four pieces of equipment we use to capture animals for this survey. The first is a pooter. This is a small container with two tubes on top. Put the tube with the attached gauze to your mouth and the other tube over the animal. When you suck, the animal will be drawn into the pooter where it can be examined. A sweep net is another piece of equipment that catches animals when you sweep it through leaves on a tree or a bush. The animal then gets trapped in the net. We can create a pitfall trap by digging a hole in the ground with a trowel and placing a container such as a glass jar inside it. Cover the hole with leaves or even a thin piece of wood. Over time, small insects will crawl under the wood and fall into the pitfall trap. A beating tray works best by inserting it into or underneath a tree or a bush. Shake the branches of the bush and insects will fall off the leaves and onto the beating tray. So what if you are examining an animal you've caught, such as the one in the image, but you don't know what species it is? In this case, we use a set of questions called a key to help us identify the animal. A key is a set of questions you answer based on an animal's characteristics. For example, this animal has wings, so we answer yes to the first question. The animal has a total of four wings and has a fuzzy, hairy body, which leads us to identifying it as a bee. A key can also be used to identify plants that you find in the habitat. The final part of the study is to carry out a quantitative survey. This type of survey notes the amount of a particular type of living thing that lives in the habitat. The two pieces of equipment we need for this are a pen and a square wooden frame called a quadrat. To find the number of plants in the habitat, First, throw the pen randomly over your shoulder. This needs to be a random throw to ensure a fair test. Place the quadrat on the ground, making sure the pen is in the centre of the quadrat. Take note of all the plants you find in the quadrat, using a key to help you if you don't know the name of some of them. In this quadrat, we note down grass, daisies, buttercups and thistles. Repeat this process a total of five times before using your records to calculate the percentage frequency of each plant. These are an example of the results retrieved by a student. Looking at the table, the green ticks represent if the plant was present in that throw of the quadrat, while an X tells us that the plant was absent. From reading the table, we can see that the student found grass in all five quadrat throws, a daisy in two, a buttercup in three, a thistle in one, and a nettle in one. To calculate the percentage frequency for each plant, you'll need to memorise the formula you can see on the screen now. Percentage frequency is equal to the number of quadrats with the plant, divided by the total number of quadrat rows, which in this student's case is 5, and this answer is then multiplied by 100. You can use a calculator to help you with these calculations. So grass could be found in 5 quadrats, a total of 5 quadrats were thrown, so after dividing 5 by 5, 
we multiply the answer by 100 to give grass a percentage frequency of 100%. To find the percentage frequency of daisies, we now put 2 into the formula because daisies could be found in 2 of the quadrats. Again, a total of 5 quadrats were thrown, so after dividing 2 by 5, we multiply the answer by 100 to give the daisies a percentage frequency of 40%. Check out the remaining 3 calculations for buttercups, thistles and nettles. Whenever a quadrat is thrown in this habitat, there's a 60% chance of it landing on a buttercup and a 10% chance of it landing on a thistle or a nettle. Make sure you know the formula to calculate percentage frequency off by heart because it's important for your exams. So that's it for this video on ecology habitat studies. Make sure you're revised over each of these three points in preparation for your exams and make sure you're familiar with each of these keywords you can see on the screen now. Thanks for watching this great guide video. If you found this video helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Best of luck with your vision.